Hey guys, Wells Knight here. Welcome back to another episode of Vault Hunters. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a fantastic day. Uh, I have good news and bad news. The good news is I am now level 50, which means I am caught up with everybody else on the server. I think uh, Iskall and Stress, I believe, are also at level 50, and everybody else is actually uh, lower than that. I think False and um, Etho are both in like the mid-40s. Uh, and then, I'm not sure about everyone, but either way, uh, I am now tied for the highest level on the server, and hopefully, when we run this vault right here, uh, we will be, uh, even higher. We will be hopefully level 51 by the time it is all said and done. Uh, so, a few things. Um, I have gone ahead and crafted up a vast quantity of of knowledge stars. I've been banking them. I also found one in the black market, which was pretty sweet. Uh, but we have six knowledge stars here. There we go. That gives us seven knowledge points, which means we can unlock some mods. So I've been kind of thinking about this. I definitely want mechanism and I definitely want create. The question is, which one do we want first? I'm probably going to skip thermal expansion and I'm probably going to skip Botania. But I want one of these two mods for sure. Uh, and I think I also want refined storage and colossal chests. Because these uh, – the nice thing about these is that they don't actually increase uh, the cost of other storage mods. And with refined storage, storage drawers, and then colossal chests, you can set up a pretty solid uh, refined storage network – uh, without having to make a bunch of drives because you can use drawers for basically anything that you'll have a lot of and then a colossal chest or two for kind of all like the random one-off items that you get. You know, like, oh, I have a, a saddle or like I've got a one twisted trap door or like whatever, right? So you can have kind of a colossal chest for sort of bulk storage, I guess you'd say, for like all these random things. Uh, that you just sort of accumulate over time, and then storage drawers for pretty much everything else. But I know exactly what I am going to spend my expertise point on, and that is the second level of fortuitous finesse to make uh, legendary modifiers a little bit more common on our vault gear. And then I have three unspent skill points. I'm going to save up for the final level of speed, I think. Uh, so hopefully after we run this vault, we will be good to go. Um, now, I do have – oop, eh, 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 nope, nope, you, yep, you go there. I do have – oh, no, it's right here. A blue trinket that gives me a double vault experience, which would be nice. Might as well throw that into our blue trinket slot. Uh, now, you may remember at the start I said I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that I still have not found one of these stupid alchemy archives. <laughs> I have cleared so many dungeons, and none of them have had uh, the archive at the end. So I'm just getting really unlucky. Um, but it is what it is. Maybe we'll find one inside our first uh, server? Uh, there we go, sir. Server was uh, struggling there for a minute. Um, maybe we'll find one inside of this vault. Oh, before I go in. Yeah, I need to dump all this stuff into my storage room. Um, totally forgot. I had to go uh, searching for some stuff for the last vault crystal. And I almost forgot that I still had all of this stuff in my inventory. There we go. Okay, cool. So, no, no. What? No, not shift lock. Um, there we go. <laughs> we're, we're fine. Um, and food, I should be good. I've got these 12 vault steak, but then I do also have a bunch of vault sweets and a whole bunch of sweets blocks if I really need them. <coughs> Excuse me. So we should be okay there. So let's go ahead and run our very first level 50 vault, and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it is a vault that we can actually complete. I'm optimistic. And it's just an elixir vault. Okay, fantastic. We can totally work with that. Uh, we're just going to keep running. We know the hallway is straight. 
so it'll be fine. So I read the co- I was reading comments, and one of you told me that every time you enter an elixir vault, um, it randomizes what thing within the vault gives you a ridiculous amount of XP, and that's between like coins, chests, killing mobs, etc., etc., etc. So the real trick to completing elixir vaults, uh, at least at high levels, is figure out what the really good thing is for that vault. And then do – like focus on doing a lot of that. Uh, I'm thinking it might be chests for this one. It's it, – we will see. But we've gotten like a pretty decent amount of experience uh, every time we have mined a chest even though they've only been wooden chests. If chests is the answer, that's going to make this really easy. It does not appear to be killing mobs though. That's for sure. So I guess the other thing, it could be coins. Nope, it is not coins. We are getting very little experience. Hey, rude. Where'd you all come from? Oh, from up above. Okay. That was that was very rude of you. Uh, but I do still want the coins because you uh, vault gold. Uh, I'm I'm not super low on it, but it's it's, it's a little dicey. Um, I could definitely afford to have more. I should be, like, relatively safe. Oh, maybe... No, no, maybe not. Okay, yep, run away. We're fine. Okay, there we go. Let's find out if... Mm, now, if it was chests, I think we would have gotten more experience from mining those. So, it's looking like vault ores are probably the... Uh, the ultimate experience giver or the ultimate elixir giver for this particular vault, uh, which is, you know, fine because we, we're pretty much always going to want to mine ores when we come across them anyway. So it'll be okay. Yeah, see, these these right here are the issue. It's like I'm getting these generations and, and these don't really do anything. They give you like basically no ore. Now this, there, here we go. This is what we're looking for is these big giant mine looking ones. Uh, this will be much better. Okay, from that one alone, we're basically up to half. Uh, <laughs> so not too bad. Uh, and then we have up here, it looks like a few more that are a little bit on the larger side as well. So this should set us up pretty nicely. Now we have already spent almost 10 minutes in the vault. So uh, I'd like to pick up the pace a little bit, but... With that said, finding this ore room and knowing that ore is the answer, I think we're going to be fine as far as actually completing the vault goes. Okay, so there we go. I think we've gotten pretty much everything in this room. Still did not see a dungeon, unfortunately. But, other than that, this was a absolutely fantastic room. We got, uh, I mean, we're, we're two-thirds of the way on our experience goal, and... We've barely done, like, anything. Aha! I have spotted a dungeon door. Oh, just kidding. Uh, it doesn't open. Maybe it's a new door. Maybe I need, like, a specific... Because this is a level 50 vault, so maybe I need, like, a key or something to open that? Because that one doesn't open like a... Hey, quit it. Because that one, unfortunately, does not open like a regular door. Oh, here's another thing as well. I recently learned that if you shift-click the compass, you can change what it points to. You can point it at, like, uh, this lodestone, for example. Since I know that once I get enough uh, elixir, I'm going to have to come back to a lodestone. I can direct myself to that instead of back to the uh, starting room. So that's pretty cool. Okay, I just killed one of these uh, belching zombie guys, and... Uh, that gave me enough experience to complete the vault. So now as long as we don't die, we should at least have a uh, successful vault... Com Dude, these guys are everywhere in this vault. Uh, we should at least have a successful vault completion here, which is good. Still no dungeon, though, and obviously I will keep looking around until it's, you know, until I'm running out of time. Ooh, we have an X marks the spot room. Uh, this may be 
a terrible idea. But I have to at least try? Hey! It worked out. Sweet. Okay, so... Uh, we are now going to get all the ornate chests. Okay, I think I got them all. That was a lot of ornate chests, which is great. Because uh, those are pretty rare. And, uh, you know, the more the merrier. This has been a pretty good room. I think I've done the uh, the X marks the spot room a total of, like, I don't know, um, four times, I think. And I've only gotten uh, a bad result once. So... So far, you know, it's been it's been a pretty good room for me. Uh, I just realized I am... Well, you know what? We're getting pretty low on time anyway. Uh, let's just head back. Uh, we'll check the upper levels. We still got a little bit of time, but um, we're running low enough at this point that I think we should probably start thinking about getting out of here. Please stop hitting me. And hey, you know what? More ornate chests? Why not? Don't mind if I do. Ooh, undamaged anvil as well. And with that, I think it is time to make our escape. Uh, we only got a minute left, and I don't want to push it. We're not going to be able to find a dungeon and complete it anyway. So we'll take it. Uh, we got the vault finished. We did it in one piece. We were successful. And there it is, our first level 50 vault. All finished. Not too shabby. Let's see what we get here for vault rewards. So we got seven... 71,000 experience from that. Holy guacamole. That is a lot of experience. Um, I think... So I guess... Well, I mean, then again, we also have the blue trinket uh, that doubles our vault experience. So I guess that's not that surprising. Um, but it looks like it takes considerably longer like a, to level up once you hit level 50. Um be, I, I don't know if it's a linear thing, but like previously, pretty much every time I completed a vault, I was getting, you know, almost a full level. And here it was, I, I think I was around like here. It looks like it gave us about a half a level despite getting double the experience we've gotten in the past. Uh, but hey, that's fine. Uh, okay, so Elixir Crate. Let's see what we got. Um, chipped Jewels. We got an artifact. Okay, that's amazing. And then we got some unidentified vault gear, which is also great. What about in here? What did we get in here? Uh, a lot of junk I don't need. Some more vault gear. Oh, a key piece for a treasure key. Okay, yeah, so that door... Um, just out of curiosity, what goes into making a treasure key? Blank key, key piece. I see. So you... Oh, I get it. So that was a Xenium door. Oh, uh, because it was purple. And we would have had to combine a Xenium uh, gem or cluster or whatever, which is made with eight <laughs> Xenium around a perfect black opal. Okay, that's expensive. Uh, we would have had to combine that with a blank key to make a key for that door. Okay, gotcha. I think that's I, I think that's how it works anyway. Um, okay, well, that's something. Uh, but we do have all of this vault gear to identify, so... There we go. What did we get? So this is the one thing I'm really interested in. Uh, vault sword. 17 versus... This is just worse in basically every way uh, than my previous one. Okay. Uh, I mean, I could spend a ton of crafting resources and stuff to try and repair it, but I just don't think that's worth it. Uh, block chance, knockback resist, meh. I mean, I would rather have block chance over thorns, to be honest. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Thorns has come in really clutch. Ooh, this, though, uh, is also not as good as our current chest plate. So, yeah, a little disappointing when it comes to the vault gear. Um, I mean, we did get a legendary resistance, or a legendary uh, 
modifier, but it's just knockback resistance. So, meh, whatever. Uh, but we got a bunch of other good stuff. We did get some uh, some jewels, which are always useful. Um, and we got some vault gold. And then in here, we got a bunch of vault gems. Ooh, what's this? Chaotic focus. Can be used to modify vault gear. Reforge the tier of a random modifier. Okay, interesting. Those are new. Haven't seen those before. Uh, we did not get any new burger ingredients that we haven't already seen. Although I know that you do get new stuff at level 50. Uh, you can start getting pickles. They start showing up at level 50. Uh, we didn't get any, though, so oh well. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Not a terrible vault. We got some level ups and, uh, oh, we did not actually. We're not leveled up. What am I talking about? We're still level 50. So actually, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're close enough that I think I'm just going to craft a few vault burgers. We'll just make a couple of these guys. Let's make like two of them. Wow. We're going to have to make like two more. But that's fine. There we go. Level 51. So that gives us our fourth skill point, which I can now put into speed. So we now have maxed our speed. We essentially have speed four at all times, and we can zoom, which will be great for getting around vaults. Uh, but anyway, let me get all my stuff organized, and then we'll move on to the next thing. I had some points to spend and some decisions to make. So I spent uh, one point on the last level of speed. So we now essentially have speed four wherever we go, which is pretty amazing. Uh, I did go ahead and upgrade uh, fortuitous finesse. Uh, actually, we did that before we went into the vault. And then I spent some research points. I had some uh, knowledge stars banked and all that other kind of stuff. Um, but I went ahead and unlocked Colossal Chests and Refined Storage. And the reason for that, uh, specifically for Colossal Chests, Refined Storage I don't think needs really an explanation. This is going to allow us to set up a storage network that will be amazing uh, and much more convenient than what we're dealing with right now. But Colossal Chests might be a little bit of a strange one for some of you. And that, the reason for that is basically I'm going to use both of these two mods together for my Refined Storage Network. The idea is I'm going to have a whole bunch of storage drawers which is a mod that we haven't really gotten into at all yet, despite having unlocked it ages ago. Um, and those will be for individual specific things, like I'll have a drawer for uh, wooden chunks and a drawer for driftwood and so on and so forth. Uh, but then the colossal chest will essentially be for everything else. It will be like bulk storage for all the random one-off things that you get, like, just a couple of, like, saddles or, um, uh, I don't know, rails, random little things that I don't want to have a designated storage drawer for. And that is essentially going to be the plan, uh, because I, yeah, we, storage is, is going to be really important for us. Now, a refined storage network does require power. Thankfully, we do have the power mod. Uh, and I opened up a bunch of mod boxes and got some useful things. So we did get some stuff here from, uh, oh, do these only stack to five? I guess they do. Uh, so I went ahead and opened up a bunch of mod boxes, and we got thermogenerators and furnators from them. Uh, furnators are essentially, you put burnable stuff in it, like coal or charcoal or whatever, and it, it generates power. And then thermogenerators, you put them over lava, and they generate power based on that. It's just a sort of infinite free passive power generation, which is really nice. I shouldn't need a ton of power for a refined storage network. I shouldn't need that much uh, because really it's just going to be a network connected to two things, the storage drawers, which will be one connection. Uh, and those connections will be made using these things, external storage that will connect to the drawer controller. Uh, and then also it will be connected to the colossal chest. So, that's kind of the plan. Um, what I have noticed, though, looking through a lot of these recipes, like for storage drawers and stuff like that, is that I am going to need a massive quantity of chromatic iron. And I've got 
an okay amount of it right now, but this is not going to be nearly enough. I'm going to need way more chromatic iron than this. So I think I am going to need to go mining for chromatic iron. And honestly, I've been doing some thinking about it, and I think we're kind of getting to the point where I should really make some vanilla tools. And by that, I don't mean tools from the vanilla game. I mean tools specifically for when I'm not in a vault. So what we're going to do, I think, is – where are my – is it this one, the tool station? Yeah, here we go. We're going to go ahead and make – uh, like a melt, we'll make like a hammer and uh, probably an axe or some things like that. We'll we'll make some various tools for vanilla, um, and then what we're gonna do is use gems to put van uh, vanilla immortality on them, so that they will uh, essentially not break in the overworld. We won't need to worry about stuff like living affinity and gilded affinity. They're only gonna be used for when we're not in a vault. They'll be used outside of the world, and they will allow me to mine, and they will never break, and they will be fast, and they will be good. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to get some tools made and then go mining and hopefully find some chromatic iron. So a bit of a progress update for you, my friends. Uh, I have gone ahead and made two new tools that will only be used for vanilla. I made a shatterer, which is a hammer with axing, picking, and shoveling, and then a paxel uh, with axing you know, picking and shoveling. We know where the Paxel is. Uh, and they both have over 100% vanilla immortality, so they are completely and totally unbreakable as long as they are not used in a vault. Uh, you'll notice I did put Unbreaking 3 on them still. That is uh, so that in a pinch, if I really need to, I can use them in a vault. Uh, but for the most part, these are just going to be used uh, out in the normal world. Now, you may notice I have a whole lot of chromatic iron ingots and driftwood and logs in my inventory. That is because... We are going to make a colossal chest. We are going to make a colossal chest that is a five by five, and it's going to go right here. Um, this thing has over 3,000 slots in it and can hold, uh, if it was all stacks of things that stack to 64, over 200,000 items. But we're not going to be putting things in it that we have large quantities of. So, uh, to make this, we need to make uh, 97 walls. It has 98 blocks. We need 97 walls and a colossal chest core. So first things first, we're going to make a stack. And uh, that's not right. Um, we want half a stack. There we go. So that is 96 walls. Uh, we need 90, well, technically we need 96 walls, and then we need a chest core and an interface, because we want to be able to hook it up to our refined storage system once we have that up and running. So let's just go ahead and make two more. And then to make the core, we need Laramar. And to make the interface, we need a core. So, we're going to go two cores, and then an interface. I need polished vault stone, which you get from just smelting regular vault stone. I should have some. Yeah, there we go. And bada bing, bada boom. Okay, we now have our colossal chest interface, our colossal chest core, and our colossal chest walls. Now, I have a piece of glowstone down here. I think... I, I don't know for sure, but I think this thing is a three by – or a I, – I think it's considered a transparent block. I also just realized um, this is the wrong size. It's actually – it's because my, uh, my shatterer that I used to dig this out is actually too big. So it's actually going to fit in a bit of a smaller space. Base. Let's just grab some sandstone here. It's actually going to fit in this space right here. So it'll fit nice and snugly back in this little corner. Like so. So, And it should come out to right here. It's going to be a 5 by 5 So 
The way this works, I think, I've never actually made one of these before, so hopefully this works the way I think it does. Uh, you put down your 5x5. Five five. Uh, hold on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Yeah, so it actually goes to here. And you have to make the walls. You leave the inside of it hollow. Uh, top as well. Actually, I should get... I'm just going to throw you right up there, just so there's a little bit of light. Because we don't want it completely dark up there. Can we actually see that torch from anywhere? Yeah, we kind of can. Okay, well, I'll deal with that later. It's fine. And then... I believe we just need... To go, I think I did some of my math wrong, but that's fine. Like this? Con contains an invalid block. Air. Where, where does, oh, duh. I did not do all of my math wrong. Uh, in fact, I am one short. So let's make one more. I forgot to do one of the walls. Put that there. And then we'll go... Oh, no, it was in the... Th it's fine. Whatever. We're probably going to end up making a second one of these at some point. But there we go. We now have a colossal chest. And this thing, you can't really see, but this thing is huge. Um, there, There's a lot of... It, it has lots of space. Uh, and it even opens, I just noticed. I didn't realize that was a thing. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be kind of our bulk storage for all of our, like, random stuff that uh, we don't want to have a designated storage drawer for. I also went ahead and opened up a few more mod boxes. And I actually got a 16K disk drive. Which is great, because uh, that will also store a lot of items. We have a 1K, but that's not a great amount. Uh, but this will also store 16,000 items for us, which is a fairly decent amount. So anything that doesn't go in there uh, can go into that disk drive. And then we'll have storage drawers, obviously. That's essentially going to be the plan. Um, as far as storage grows, uh, words, as far as storage drawers goes, uh, drawers. Here we go. We're going to want to make one-by-one one drawers for specific things, uh, specifically vault cobblestone, probably deep slate, cobblestone, regular smooth stone, and then probably uh, sandy rocks, driftwood, wooden chunks, and honestly, maybe vault suites. Because I have two shulker boxes full of vault suites right now. And then the rest of this stuff I think is pretty much just going to be uh, the 2x2 two two drawers. Because I won't have nearly as much. And then we'll do upgrades. Uh, what do upgrades cost again? Chromatic iron. So this is probably the upgrade we would do. Because this is not super expensive. Vault diamonds gets a little pricey. But... The thing is, when you make a drawer, in fact, let's actually go ahead and do that real quick. Let's just make a drawer so I can show you how this works, if you are unfamiliar. Uh, when you make a drawer, like so, uh, it actually has an interface. You can shift right click, and there is room for uh, quite a few upgrades, as you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven upgrades. And the thing is, they're not additive, they're multiplicative. So if I put in an eight, uh, a gold upgrade, it'll be eight times more. But then if I put in a second gold upgrade, then it goes to 64 times more. And then another one after that is whatever the math of 64 times eight is, um, and so on and so forth. Now, we will probably want to leave room for a void upgrade. Uh, this basically just destroys any extra items. Eventually, once we get to a point where we are automating a lot of the production of this stuff, these drawers are going to fill up. 
And we want we don't want to have our uh, system all backed up and stuff with all these overflowing items. So we'll throw a void upgrade in there for things that we're producing, and that way, uh, anything extra just gets destroyed automatically. Because like realistically, do you need more than four million cobblestone at any one given time? Probably not. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the plan. Um, we're also going to need a drawer key, and this is actually a little bit more expensive, uh, it looks like, but thankfully we only need one. So let's just grab, what was the recipe? A drawer, some two volt diamonds, a single chromatic steel. Okay. And this is super, super important when it comes to storage drawers. This will let you uh, lock drawers. So, for example, if I want a drawer for vault cobblestone, I can put that in here. And then I can lock it or unlock it. If it is locked, when I pull all of that, vo uh, that vault cobblestone out, it's now completely out. You'll notice it still keeps vault cobblestone. And that way, if I were to try to put in, say, driftwood, it doesn't work. If this is unlocked, and I try to put in... Oh. Oh, right, because, of course, I unloaded all the stuff. Uh, now, if I, uh, now that I've clicked it enough times to remove everything, now... There is driftwood. Now, now it can new stuff can go into it. So if you're setting up a storage network where you're like, I want all these things to be in specific spots so I know where they are, uh, you want to lock things and set things up just the way you want. So that we're going to need this vault key. But again, thankfully, we only need it once. It's reusable. It works on all your drawers. Uh, in fact, it can work on your entire drawer network at once. If you grab a drawer controller and we just put this next to it uh although this is a framed drawer controller so i don't know if this is actually i don't know if this actually works as a drawer controller or not um i'm not sure I'll ask Yiskal, since he just happened to log on. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm going to start setting up storage drawers and getting that all figured out. We're going to go through so much chromatic iron. We went through six and some st six and a few stacks uh, just to make the colossal chest. We'll probably make a second colossal chest in the future, but not right now. And this is all the chromatic iron I have left. And unfortunately, uh, this is all the vault gold I have left. This, uh, I'm, I am broke. <laughs> I died, and it cost me 75 gold to revive myself. Apparently, this uh, axe, this Omega axe from level 30, cost 14 gold by itself. I was like, holy cow. Uh, so, yeah, not great. Uh, I basically am completely out of vault gold, which is unfortunate. I need to run some vaults. The problem is, right now, I can't afford to run some vaults, because if I die, I can't afford to resurrect myself. So I'm kind of in a rock and a hard place, but uh, I'll figure it out. Maybe Iskol will run some vaults with me or something. I don't know. We'll see. So I ran a vault last night with Iskol and Stress. It's now the next morning. Um, I was not actually recording because it was like three in the morning and I was super tired and I just didn't feel like being entertaining. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to run the vault. Um, and guess what? We finally found the alchemy archive that we have been looking for for all of eternity. It's complete. Uh, <laughs> I can now do quests. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, so yeah, modify our workbench, and now we've got all this other stuff. Now we've got a thousand new quests to to look into, uh, and that archive quest actually gave us a pog, which is fantastic because uh, you can never have enough of those. So pretty happy about that. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Now uh, it says we need to acquire a modifier workbench, and I think I already have one of those. It's uh, this one. There we go. Uh, so that's good. 
can just I, I broke a small part of my house. Uh, but yeah, the modifier workbench. This lets you when you make gear. Um, I, there's not really a good example, but when you make gear, you can actually put specific things on it. Uh, you're like, uh, so yeah, very, very useful. That's basically what it does in a nutshell, but that allows us to complete that quest. Now we have storing gear. The wardrobe allows you to store a set of gear and a hotbar that you can quick switch between. Uh, this enables having many different build sets. Okay, so we need to interact with a wardrobe. So wardrobe... How does one make this? Vault Essence Armor Stand in a Vault Diamond Block. Okay, that's not terrible. And there we go. Wardrobe. So let's see. If I just throw this thing down, I don't know, right here. Um, let's put our torch back, I guess, here. That's fine. So that interacts with the wardrobe and... Okay. Oh, I see. This is where you swap. So you can set up a thing, and then you can keep swapping and swapping. Okay, got it. Cool. Nifty. And then I think that gives me another wardrobe as a reward, which is a little weird. But hey, uh, whatever. Maybe each wardrobe can only hold one set of gear at a time. Maybe that's how it works. Um, but yeah, wardrobe quest done. And then we have... Oh, no. Oh, wait, no. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Skill altar. I was like, don't make me find another altar. Uh, no, we're good. So let's see here. Skill altar. What does this cost? Wow, three black chromatic steel ingots. That's a little pricey. Uh, I don't know that I have that at the moment, but I can make it. So it'll be fine. Um... Let's do this, and then it was eight of those, and there we go. Okay, and then what was the rest of it? Two Vault Essence, a Red Wool, and a Glass Pane. Okay, well, I do have Red Wool, thankfully. It was Vault Essence, and then a Glass Pane. Okay, there we go. So there, we now have our skill altar. And don't worry, my friends, I will read through these quests more thoroughly off camera uh, so that I actually know what I'm doing. But, okay, import, save your abilities and talents. Okay, uh, sure. Interesting. So these are my abilities and talents, I guess. Uh, cool. Well, either way. And then this is one that I've been waiting for. Uh, the transmogrification table. And yes, I know I can do a lot of these things before the quest, but I kind of want to do it along with the quest just so it, like, makes sense. Uh, do we have an enchanting table? We do not. I thought maybe I had picked up an extra one in the vault at some point, but that's okay. So grab you, I need four obsidian, and a book. What did I do? Oh, I clicked an orb of regret. I didn't mean to. I, 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 I made a mistake. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> and then we need two driftwood, a soul, uh, a two driftwood, one vault essence, and three chromatic steel. There we go. And this thing is pretty nifty. So, uh, yeah, you basically can take stuff. Like, if I'm like, this hat doesn't match my vibe. I can grab, uh, hopefully it's only vault bronze and not vault gold. But you can essentially choose from any hat that you have already discovered, like this one, for example, and for the cost of 41 volt bronze, I can turn this hat into this hat. So now it actually, so you can, you can fashion, which is, you know, everyone knows that the, the real end game is fashion. Uh, 
<laughs> so, yeah, quite useful. Um, then we get into catalysts, and these are actually super, super, super important. Uh, these will allow you to modify crystals. So, uh, an infused catalyst to a vault crystal in an anvil. Okay, well, I don't actually have a vault crystal at the moment. So let's try and make one, and I guess you guys will see just how ridiculous crystals are starting to get. Uh, yeah, 318 netherrack, 161 copper, 41 eggs, and 90 azalea saplings, or bushes, or whatever. Um, yeah, that, that, that adds up. We're getting to the point now where things are starting to be real pricey. I have 13 eggs, and unfortunately, I don't think that the animal pens with chickens, I don't think that actually produces eggs. Maybe if I put, like, a hopper underneath it, it might, but I don't know. So, yeah, I'm going to have to play around with it. Looks like I got to make a crystal. So I guess you can actually get eggs from the chickens and animal pens, although not in the way I thought. You don't put a hopper underneath. You actually use a bucket, and that will get you a bunch of eggs. Uh, got a 64, which isn't a ton, but it is more than enough for what we needed. So, yeah, I, I guess it works. Uh, <laughs> bucket the uh, chickens. Did would Who would have thunk? Okay, so crystal made. I think I'm going to put this uh, living and random negative catalyst on there. Uh, reminder, we do have the expertise here for infuser, uh, that, and we have this maxed out. So we have a 60% chance, uh, if I'm understanding this properly, that this random negative is not actually going to apply. Uh, but I guess we'll find out. Let's uh, sleep real quick. And then what we'll do do is just pop over to our anvil, throw that in along with that. Oh, uh, other way around. There we go. And there we go. See, it did not apply the uh, the random negative. So this will now have plus 25% living chests. Now, from what I understand, it's actually way better uh, to wait until you have, like, Five of those, so you can have plus, you know, 125 <laughs> living chests or something like that. Uh, but I, I wanted to get the quest completed, so I went with uh, with that one. Now, uh, let's see. Catalysts, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it will not let me go to my next quest. Right? Because we have done this. Yeah, my next quest should be the architect seal. Maybe it's be maybe I just need to log out and log back in. Um, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, let me try that. Okay, there we go. After logging out uh, of the server and logging back in, now I have this thing. So I need a seal of the architect. Um, seal of the architect. What goes into making one of these? Vault diamond block, blank seal, knowledge shard, and some vault essence. Okay, that doesn't seem that terrible. Uh, vault diamond block, we'll need nine for that. Six vault essence. And then a blank seal. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and make our knowledge shard, make our... Vault Diamond Block, and bada bing, bada boom, we now have a Seal of the Architect. Uh, so, uh, we might as well use the same crystal, which I keep... Oh. Oh, okay, does it have to be on a crystal that isn't already modified? I guess so. Because it won't let me put this one on there, so I'm going to have to make another crystal... Which means I might as well run this vault first. Tell you what, we're kind of running low on time for this episode anyway. Uh, why don't we save that for next time? Uh, guys, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Link's in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.